It's really okay to assume that buying a roof rack is a pretty simple process. You know, I just want something on top of my vehicle on which to attach some stuff. However, there is a lot more to roof rack design than meets the eye. I worked with uh, the guys at Easy Orn in South Africa a couple of years back. I'm visiting Easy Orn. Easy Orn is a Johannesburg company and definitely one of the pioneers in the 4x4 equipment industry. And they told me that uh, a, a little bit about the process that they went through before they released their rack onto the market. But these guys are the stalwarts of the industry, building great products and doing them well. And it took something like two years of testing. The early versions were fitted to the Expedition 7 vehicles. That Expedition 7 were, was uh, quite well publicized for Land Cruisers traveling on all of the continents on the planet. They carried these roof racks. And they've been changed and changed and changed. Two years only after that did they actually appear on the market. And they are in fact being sold in about five or six different countries all over the world. Definitely an expedition ready rack. But what it taught me was that building a rack and designing a rack is not that easy. Now it's okay to go and buy a cheap Chinese rack for your vehicle but understand what you're buying. You're not buying an Easy On, you're not buying a Rhino, you're not buying a Tracklander, you're buying a copy probably my guess is a bad copy but that's not necessarily the, a bad thing because well <clears throat> maybe you just want to put your bikes on it for the weekend fine you just want to you know use it for for general purpose use nothing wrong with them okay the feet design potentially could damage your roof so they're not as thoroughly designed as the more expensive racks so be aware of that but mostly be aware that they are, generally speaking, not expedition-ready racks. The R&D that go into these good racks is significant. They, they pour money into development. And the end product, that the reason why you're spending more on it, is going to deliver more. So if you're going to ask more of your rack in terms of how well all the fittings attached to it, how strong it is, how the design is suited best for the specific vehicles, not generic design that to fit on any vehicle. Those doesn't work anymore. Vehicles are not made the same way. They don't all have gutters. They're all different. So the compromise you're going to be making with a lower price, just understand that those are the compromises that are going to, you're going to be faced with. Okay? If you want an expedition rack that is going to be strong and take a heavy load and we'll talk about loads in a minute then you're going to have to spend the money or be very lucky since about 1999 roof rack makers have gone modular modular systems and this is typical of one this is a rhino rack think of others uh, front runner i think they were the first uh easy on there are many of them the idea behind modular is that <clears throat> you have slats or slots along the rails. The rails mostly are longitudinal. In case of front runner, they're lateral. All simply the same idea. In that, at any time, I can mount my accessories by simply taking a like this, and you slide them in and you lock them down like that sounds good doesn't it it is good it's very good for a number of reasons the manufacturers of the roof rack can supply their own accessories and many manufacturers including rhino have their own captive nuts these are called captive well they're nuts but they are specially designed to fit perfectly in the shallow, in this case, groove. And so, therefore, you will want to buy their accessories. This is a good marketing idea, and practically speaking, it's good. But it does have some limitations. So anywhere that I want to put this, whether it be a spade bracket, an awning bracket, 
I want to carry a gas bottle, I want to carry a spare wheel, I just simply clip it on. <clears throat> However, while it is extremely easy to fit mounting brackets when the roof is like this in the showroom, when it's on your vehicle packed with stuff, it's not. When this is fully packed and I have put my loading eyes on the down the grooves and I'm ready to pack my rack, then I go ahead and strap everything down. Then if I now decide, oh, I think I'd like to put something else there or here or there, I now have to find a way of getting an, a mounting eye to the best location. If I've got something packed there, I can't use that, can I? The real practical disadvantage of modular is that I now will have to unpack part of my rack in order to get an eye and slide it in to the position that I need it. So my advice is for those of you who like the modular rack is to buy lots of eyes and cover the thing in eyes. You know, five eyes on every single slider, something like that. So that when you are packed and you want to make a change, it's very easy. The Rhino rack has another disadvantage and it is very similar to the front runner rack but not similar to the Easy On rack. When mounting things onto the roof rack, sometimes you actually just don't want to have to find an eye and move an eye because whenever you've got to do that, you've got to climb onto the rack and it's fiddly. So sometimes you just want to get a bungee with a hook, tie on some firewood, something light, a chair, and you want to take a bungee with a hook and hook it. You cannot hook it on this rack anywhere but under here. There is a slot under there, you could hook it there on, on of all of the lateral slaps but not on the longitudinal slaps. I cannot put, I would have to go right around and hook it under there, it's a hassle. It's, and it's a practical disadvantage of some modular systems. But by far the biggest advantage of a modular type rack is the range of accessories you can get for them. But do not assume for a minute that a front runner accessory will fit on a rhino rack. As a general rule, they don't. Some roof rack manufacturers, not that many, but some, make their slats the same size and suitable to fit a standard nut that you'd get from the high street. Modular racks, <clears throat> Um, most of them are made for export. They are, can be flat packed. That is why the feet are separate. Almost all manufacturers of racks do that now. Separate feet that you bolt on. They're too expensive to transport with the feet on. We'll talk more about feet in a minute. The motivation for making this video was that I decided to fit a rack onto the top of my troop carrier. <clears throat> Mainly to carry firewood. And it got me thinking. When deciding to fit a roof, rack you need to decide what you're going to use it for what kind of terrain are you going to be driving over what kind of weights you're going to be carrying is your vehicle suitable for a roof rack not all vehicles have traditional gutters some have other mounting systems some are much stronger than others which will then dictate how much weight you can fit on it so when going to your roof rack store know how much weight you're going to want to fit and the other question that the roof rack store might not be able to answer is is the vehicle's mounting point suitable to carry that much weight they might say to you okay our rack is suitable for 150 kilograms or 200 kilograms is the mounting not the part of the roof rack and not even the feet of the roof rack is the vehicle itself are the mounting points suitable to carry that much weight Many modern SUVs are not suitable for carrying more than 100-ish kilograms. So with my, in my case, I am fitting it on top of the Hercules rooftop tent. It has mounts sufficient for me to carry as much as, I mean, a lot of weight, but I don't want to. The vehicle is already a little bit top heavy, so I have to be wise about A, <clears throat> the weight of the rack itself, 
B, what load am I going to put up there? I'm putting it up there principally for firewood and as a secondary place to carry a spare second spare wheel should I wish to take one off the back for convenience sake. The guys at Trackland are very kindly made up a rack for me. It is uh, 10 kilos, which I'm very happy about. So that is very, very light and that goes on the back. And I'm also going to attach a ladder so I can get access easier than I had before. I discovered this product a couple of months back. This is what I'm going to be fitting. I've been doing a bit of research on it, stellar reputation. And the mesh is very similar to the very first roof rack that I put on a vehicle. It was on my Range Rover. I had them build me the steel frame. And instead of the old fashioned wooden slats, I said, no, I don't want that. I want steel mesh spot welded to the slats. Because I remember on my Range Rover, I could attach anything anywhere with a simple hook and strap or it was just so easy to load anything anywhere I wanted and it, it, was, it, was, it was the answer. And I thought the world had forgotten about that idea of a mesh top and just gone the modular route and that there was no more choice in the matter until I discovered Trackland. And when I saw it, I thought, hang on a minute, that's an old friend, let me take a closer look. If I think about the idea of the Tracklander mesh concept. Um, I, I like it a lot because it is extremely strong and that the mesh is spot welded all the way along. Which means that I can, in my garage, uh, make a plate, drill some holes in it, put it underneath and mount anything I want on top of it. So as a DIY solution, it's really good. Like the modular racks though, Tracklander make lots of accessories, like these ones here. They're purpose made for their racks, just like the other modular roof rack makers. The weakest point on any roof rack are the feet. A viable option to a roof rack are load bars. Again, how much weight are you going to carry? Remember, with load bars, for example, if you've got two, you've got four mounting points. With a rack, Generally speaking, you've got more than four because expedition ready vehicles with the expedition loads that we carry, four feet are not enough. What they probably won't tell you though in the showroom unless they understand expedition travel is that some of these products are just not expedition ready. For example, this load bar has got a nice wide foot. That's good. But the only thing actually keeping it onto the roof, taking all of the strain, is this very thin, one and a half millimeter, even less maybe, steel plate. That is not going to be strong enough to hold something like a rooftop tent on the top of a vehicle when the vehicle is moving over very rough ground or very severe washboards and corrugations. Now I've heard of some roof rack manufacturers saying that they have never had a failure of any of their roof racks and they state this categorically. Well, it's, they might not actually be lying. What they don't include as part of the rack though are the feet. And I know that particular company has had many, many failures, probably more than any other single roof rack manufacturer. The profile should be as low as possible. Right? The higher it is, the higher the roof load, the CFG of the vehicle goes up, instability increases, and not only that, the chances and of breakage and the load on the feet is that much higher, the taller this is. So you want to go low profile, as low as the roof, to close to the roof as possible, without of course touching the roof. And remember, the vehicle is going to flex. The rack must be able to flex with it. This is a nice example of a nice low profile fitting of a rack on a canopy. The most common cause of breakage of a rack is when a vehicle is doing this. Okay, so for example, up a sand dune where drivers have created big divots where the wheels have dropped in and the wheels have spun and now 
your vehicle is now driving up this or along this track and that sideways motion that sideways motion puts enormous strain on the feet and my I don't know what the percentage is but I think it probably is as much as 90% of roof racks that break when I'm talking about roof rack I'm talking about the rack itself and the feet it's caused by this violent motion left and right that's why you keep the feet short and you need some lateral support of the feet a piece of steel shaped like this can easily bend but if it's braced it cannot in terms of canopies on the back of utes previous videos i've said again and again the advantage of an aluminium canopy they are many 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 one of them is the ease of fitting a rack on top of a canopy like here but also the strength most well-built aluminium canopies even stainless steel canopies have very strong and very easy to fit mountings on top for a rack this Land Rover Defender I will be doing a video about this vehicle it's a stunning stunning conversion the only part about it which I don't particularly like and wouldn't have done myself is the way they've sorted out the roof rack for mounts with most other racks I would say that would be for sufficient front runner racks no if you want to uh, make your front runner rack expedition worthy just add an extra couple of feet for no matter how long the rack is if it's a full length rack four feet on both sides uh, something like this five front runner was one of the pioneers of the modular rack with the slip and slide system and I was lucky enough actually to, to test one of the early prototypes the racks themselves are very low profile the rails are lateral not longitudinal which contributes to noise after its release they had to spend a lot of time combating the noise and they did a good job with air deflectors but they are probably a little more noisy than the competitors and because it has absolutely no longitudinal lines uh, there's no way I can attach anything to this wrap unless I've got one of these guys I do recommend that no matter what roof rack you choose test the fitting of the accessories yourself some like this one the tolerances are very tight so it can be a bit fiddly to fit the accessories now imagine doing that every time you want to put in an eye and imagine doing that every time you just want to put something onto the roof rack so while front runner were the first to introduce this idea which in principle is a good one by taking away a lip that you cannot just simply wrap they reduced its practicality significantly another common problem with racks not so much the racks themselves but the items fitted to them and it's happened to me well actually only once uh, in 2010 I was driving a Pajero with a African Outback roof rack and the problem was not with the rack because it's actually the rack was really quite nice but the fittings on the rack didn't hold the jerry can down tightly enough and I really spent a lot of time trying to get it so that the clamp would hold the jerry can down as tightly as possible well obviously it didn't do a good enough job because it ripped apart and I've seen that kind of damage quite often when you mount something onto a roof rack it must not be able to move particularly if it's something heavy like a gas bottle or 20 liters of water or fuel it must be and, you, and the, the way to do it is to actually clamp it down and if you can feel any movement at all in that fitting then the chances are if the roads get very rough particularly with this left right uh, movement something somewhere is going to break the strap hooks in that little slot it's quite thin material 
and a full jerry can weighing as much as it does being thrown around on a roof rack those things rip apart please don't take what i have said about the different rack brands on face value i suggest you talk to people many people may have different experiences from mine asking the rack makers themselves about claims that i have made would be completely pointless to get a balanced view i suggest going to resellers that offer a range of rack brands resellers that only sell one rack brand are obviously going to be biased toward that particular brand Patreon is not just a way you can support our videos, but a way to get private videos, free books, exclusive merchandise and much more. Click the Patreon button on the screen now.